Get your blood flowing. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Emmanuel United Church of Christ. We are so glad that you are here uh, and joining with us in worship. I want to say a special thanks to Ramona and David uh, for providing the flowers that are on our piano. They are there in honor of Florence Payton's 88th birthday, her first birthday in heaven. So uh, we are thinking of her and remembering her today with these beautiful flowers. This is a day of new beginnings. We began Sunday school this morning. We began confirmation this morning, and we will have new members joining us later in the service. And it is just a delight to see the movement and life that God is placing in us, even when there are hard times going around us. And whether you feel energized by that new beginning, or you wish you could have a new beginning, or you're just present in the beginning and ending of every moment, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, and we're glad that you're here. We are continuing to mask up and offer Zoom and YouTube worship uh, as we move through this pandemic. And are we, we are continuing to meet weekly for Bible study on Thursdays at noon, and happy hour uh, virtually on Tuesdays at four. Uh, and our little pantry is in need of items for colder weather. We're starting to think ahead to that, even though it really doesn't feel like it right now. Um, so uh, I think there will be on that Amazon wish list, uh, but they probably include things like hand warmers uh, and stuff like that. So start thinking ahead. And as you know, we had to cancel the church picnic last year, um, but I want to invite Rich Ackerman up because he had a uh, consolation activity and there's a prize involved. So while he's coming up, I'll remind you that you can still adopt a college student. There's a sign-up sheet in the Narthex and you can also email or text Samantha. And there's an opportunity to get rid of all those pennies that are rolling around in your purse or your wallet or your pocket because we're pooling our pennies for uh, the Miram pool. We're hoping to raise many thousands of dollars worth of pennies. And each church is asked to do five or six milk jugs full of pennies, which is a whole lot. Uh, so bring them in. I'm also gonna invite Ramona to speak after Rich. So take it away. Okay. Well, thank you to everybody who participated in the uh, crossword uh, puzzle uh, that was uh, picnic themed. Unfortunately, I, I did it a little too quick and had a few errors in there. Sorry about the grammatical ones. Uh, there was also one uh, clue that said, what do you put your uh, picnic items in? And the answer I was going for was basket, which many people got correct, but cooler fit in there too. So I had to give you that one. So that was a freebie. And then People did catch on that I didn't know how to spell Presbyterian, and I put Methodist in the uh, uh, one question where it said, what denomination runs the camp that we go to the picnic at? So uh, uh, that was uh, a freebie also. So uh, for, uh, for that, it looked like everybody who turned in their uh, puzzles uh, had correct answers. So we'll have to do a random draw on who wins the uh, a basket filled with picnic items. We have a s'mores kit. We have hot dogs like we eat at the uh, at camp. Uh, I tried to fit a watermelon in here, but <laughs> the next thing was watermelon flavored soda. So, so you got a bottle of that. So, Janae, I have this app that picks a random number. So we had 17 entries. Okay. If you could just hit that screen and touch. Okay, so the winning number is number 16, and now I'm going to look to see who number 16 in our prize package was, and it's Paula Campbell, so <laughs> congratulations. Oh wait, the one answer that had your mom's name and was spelled wrong. <laughs> no, I'm only teasing, so Paula, congratulations, and I'll bring you your bag. Uh, prize. He's always such a hard act to follow. <laughs> you 
could take care of the watermelon in the basket, couldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Janae and I had to exchange a private little joke about watermelons. Um, I'll just take a few minutes. My, my topic is a little, um, I guess, solemn, but, um, but the message is hopeful. So I don't know how many of you read your email, how many of you get email, how many of you saw the email um, that came out yesterday um, with news from the WISE team. But I'm here to talk to you all about um, the fact that September is National Suicide Prevention Month. And while we are halfway through the month already, I realized that um, when I realized my mother's birthday was the 15th, um, it, it is something that we really need to pay attention to. And certainly if we think about what Y stands for, um, the supportive and engaged part of that acronym, um, suicide prevention is certainly a way to do that. And it's not complicated. We might think it is. It's something that people are uncomfortable talking about. People are afraid to talk about it. Um, there's a lot of myths about suicide. If you talk with someone who is talking about taking their own life or talking about being that depressed or despondent, that you're going to cause them to actually follow through, when in fact the opposite is true. Um, the more you reach out to someone, the more you give them the opportunity to talk about their feelings and engage them and help them think of options, the less likely they are to take their own lives. So um, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States, which is a staggering statistic. Um, it is the second leading cause of death among people ages 10 to 24. Um, Native Americans and veterans and older adult white males have a higher risk of dying from suicide. And there's been quite a bit in the news just in the last couple of days about the increasing suicide rate among our veterans. But it can be prevented and it can, um, you can learn how to be a lifesaver with only a few hours of virtual online training, which is free. Um, the method is called QPR, which stands for question, persuade and refer. Um, many of us are perfectly willing to take CPR classes. So if someone um, has a heart attack or stops breathing in front of us, we know what to do. We know how to jump into action and, and start CPR and save that life. Um, we need to be equally comfortable um, talking with someone whose life is at risk um, because they are thinking of taking their life themselves. Um, this is something near and dear to my heart. I certainly have lived with it with my mother's struggles. Um, we didn't have a, an easy tool like QPR to, um, to, to manage, and so we just had to kind of muddle through ourselves. But the trainings, as I said, are virtual. They're easily accessible, um, and they start tomorrow. Um, you can, in the email that went out yesterday, there is a clickable website you can go to to sign up for the trainings. As I said, they are online, they're virtual, and they take just a few hours, and they are free. So we just never know when we might encounter somebody who is in that kind of a situation, and they really need us to, to know how to respond. So I would encourage as many of you as possible to take um, advantage of the opportunity and become a lifesaver. Thank you. Oh, if you have any questions and if you don't use the internet and can't click on that link, but you're interested, just contact me by phone and I will give you uh, another way to, to take advantage of it and to sign up. Thank you. I'm signed up for noon next Monday if you wanna join me. <laughs> All right, one more announcement. As I mentioned, we are uh, beginning our confirmation year, and I just wanted to let you know who our confirmands are this year. You'll start seeing them be the acolytes starting next week, but I wanna give them an opportunity to stand up and wave at you uh, and to tell you who their confirmation mentors will be. So the first one we have is Ricky Gramlich, and he's, Ew, oh dear. <laughs> He will be here in a moment, uh, and uh, his mentor is Jared Galladay. Who knows? Might be doing the same thing. We'll see. Uh, next is Lucas Gray. I saw you back there. Uh, do you want to just wave, Lucas? Um, and his confirmation mentor will be Jim Walton. We have Andrew Hoffman. And his confirmation mentor will be Jennifer Swift. And we have Sean Keller, there he is, and his confirmation mentor will be David Riley. All right, who wins the enthusiasm award, I love it. 
So pray for these folks, uh, help them know that you are loving and supporting and caring of them. Um, and I wanna offer this moment of blessing as you begin. In this moment of new beginnings, confirmands, may you be filled with a spirit of wonder, joy, and exploration. May God bless your studies and your discernment, and may you grow in love. In the name of Jesus, the great teacher, amen. Now I will invite Joseph and Janae to lead us in our opening prayer. The first shall be last. We come to worship as we are. The last shall be first. We come with confidence. The first shall be last. We come with questions. The last shall be last. We come burdened by failure. The first shall be last. We come celebrating successes. The last shall be first. We come fearful of the future. The first shall be last and the last shall be first and a little child shall lead them. Now friends, I invite you to rise in body and spirit and sing quietly our praises to God. In the UCC, we honor ancient creeds as testimonies, not tests of faith. Today, I ask you to join with us in the UCC Statement of Faith as one of those testimonies of faith. They have accompanied many on their journeys as a reminder of the companions in the faith along the way. You can find it on the screens or in the back of your hymnal. Please join me. We believe in God, the eternal spirit, who is made known to us in Jesus, our brother, and to whose deeds we testify. God calls the worlds into being, creates humankind in the divine image, and sets before us the ways of life and death. God seeks in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. God judges all humanity in all eight nations by that will of righteousness declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord, God has come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the whole creation to its creator. God bestows upon us the Holy Spirit creating and renewing the church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. God calls us into the church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be servants in the service of the whole human family, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. God promises to all who trust in the gospel, forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, the presence of the Holy Spirit in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in that kingdom 
which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto God. Amen. take a moment each week to make a confession, a way of saying that we need to clear some things out so we can be really honest with God. And so I invite you to join me in that prayer now. Each day, O oh God, there are new opportunities to show your love. There are new chances to lift up those on the outskirts who need to be seen. There are times we could notice the unnoticed, invite the uninvited, love the unlovable. And sometimes we do. Sometimes our faith is great enough that we get it right. And other times, well, we choose instead to succumb to our fear of danger or fear of losing money or status. Forgive us, God, for our fickleness to your gospel for our desire to be closer to the front of the line rather than to give up our place for another. Today and tomorrow and the next day will be more opportunities. Grant us the courage to take them. Fill us with enough faith to trust that your grace is greater than our status in others' eyes. In the name of the one at the back of the line, Jesus the Christ, amen. Today, tomorrow, and the next day, there will be more opportunities. God's grace is abundant and overflowing. Jesus offers his forgiveness to his followers and calls them anew. Thanks be to God. Amen. I would like to invite now our new members who are making their commitment to Emmanuel United Church of Christ. I wanna call forth Shirley and Mary and Kimberly. We'll have you come right up here. And Gary, I'll have you come right up here too, our church council president. Is my microphone on? No. <laughs> What's that? Keep going? Okay, friends in Christ, the microphone is on. <laughs> friends in Christ, we are all received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. These people before you have found nurture and support in the midst of this iteration of the family of Christ. And through prayer and study, they have been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. They are here for service to Jesus Christ using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows upon them. So that we can put names with faces, let me introduce our newest members. We have Shirley, who goes by Shelley Powell, we have Mary Clefus and Kimberly Carter. Each of these women has the distinction of having come to us from Christ Evangelical United Church of Christ, which, as you know, closed its doors during the pandemic last year. And they have been worshiping with us online and in person for over a year. And we are delighted to make their membership official. They are also related. 
Shelly and Mary are sisters, and Kimberly is Mary's daughter. They also, as Shelly joked, have the fine distinction of having brought Jesus to Emmanuel. Where would we be without them? This particular statue of Jesus is often in the narthex, but he is standing here in witness today. He's a beautifully carved Italian wood sculpture of the Good Shepherd, and he was the altarpiece at Christ Evangelical. We are delighted to have him in our presence. Though it has been a long journey, friends, you are no longer sojourners or strangers to this community. You are equally citizens with the saints and members of the household of God as it is made manifest in this place. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus alone being the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple of Christ. In him, you are also built into that structure to be a dwelling place of God in the spirit. And so I ask you these questions. Do you desire to affirm your baptism into the family of Jesus Christ? And do you profess Jesus as the center of your faith? If so, please say, I do. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please say, I do. I do. do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, please say, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. Will you be faithful to this community? If so, please say, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. Will you challenge this community to be the best version of itself and to live up to the things we say we believe? If so, please say, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. And will you allow yourself to be changed, shaped, and transformed by this community, living into your called identity as a beloved child of God? If so, please say, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. By your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the church. Today, we rejoice in the pilgrimage of faith which has brought you to this time and place. We give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home, and we celebrate your presence with us in this one. And now, we do not leave you to be the only one sharing a commitment, because we as a church also make a commitment to you. So members of this church, I invite you to rise in body and spirit, and others who are not yet members, uh, you may stand or sit in witness. Friends, do you affirm your baptism into the family of Jesus Christ? And do you profess Jesus as the center of your faith? If so, please say, we do. We do. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please say, we do. We do. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able. If so, please say, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Will you be faithful to these new people as they join our congregation? If so, please say, we promise our faithful companionship. We promise our faithful companionship. And will you challenge these new members to be the best versions of themselves? to help them live up to the things they say they believe. If so, please say, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Will you allow yourselves to be changed, shaped, and transformed by these new members, living into our called identity as a beloved community of God? If so, please say, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Let us pray. Oh God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for gathering us into the church, the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered in this local church and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together, we, may we live in the spirit, build one another up in love, sharing in the life and worship of the church, and serving the world 
for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Friends, on behalf of the church council and our congregation, we welcome you officially to the American family. Let us greet our brothers and sisters in this family of faith as we offer the hand of Christian love and welcome them into the community of this local congregation. We will invite them to leave the sanctuary with Pastor Rachel after the service and head out to the dining room where we can fully greet and talk with them. We are truly blessed today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Friends, it's official. You are Emmanuelites. Right. Thanks be to God. In case anyone doubts it. Here's all the documentation. Oh, okay. <laughs> so on the way out, I will collect you and we'll go down and everybody can celebrate uh, together. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> Today's text is read from the New Revised Standard Version, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, 30 through 37. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, telling them, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you squabbling about on the way here? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them and taking it in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. May God add a blessing to the reading of God's word. Well, I have a special thing to give to somebody today. Speaking of the little children. Um, so last week we gave one to our little Mr. Kate and this week, Miss Etta. So if Miss Etta wants to come up here real quick, I have a special Bible for her, which is also one of those things when you remember you get little special things. This is for our little one. It's very special because it's just for you. Well, first, Lucas has one just like it, but not just because that one's yours, right? His will have his name in it. And the coolest part is it'll have all these little questions and stuff that ask you extra stuff so you can learn more. And then in the very back, you get a couple. Of, do you love stickers? Do you like, you don't like stickers? No, no stickers. Okay, well, you get stickers and you get to put them in the Bible. And you get this bright pink highlighter too. So if anything you have a question about or you like, you get to highlight it. And it's okay. You can write in the corners and write anywhere you want because this is to learn stuff. So you can do, you can write all over it. Okay. I promise that you will not get in trouble. Okay. And so that one's yours and that one is yours. Thank you. It's one of the best parts of my job. So, 
also talking about little little kids since not just our little kids that are in the corner they probably don't remember this but when you were a baby could you do anything for anybody else sure couldn't right couldn't all, all we get to do is cry and make a mess in our diaper right that's that's about the only thing we get to do so why in the world did everybody help us we couldn't do anything for anybody else and then you some of you if you have little siblings remember when your little sibling tried to learn to eat and made a hot mess yeah i see some nods yeah they made a mess everywhere because we're not very good with spoons and forks exactly when we're you know 18 months old or younger we kind of throw it everywhere why did our parents do all this stuff for us they kept feeding us and they took us everywhere and they clothed us and they bathed us and we couldn't do anything for them why'd they do it did they did they love us okay i got a head nod they loved us you, the adult can head nod too that you loved your kids and that's why you did all the things for them well jesus grabs this kid out of apparently nowhere i don't know how he just made a child here um it's a mystery of the story but he said this kid can't do anything for us because it's just a small child but that doesn't mean we get to love it any less that doesn't mean that we get to ignore it or not pay attention to it or not feed it or not do anything else for it it's supposed to be that we help this kid because we were once that way and we're probably going to be again where we not might not be able to offer something and we might just have to accept the help which is super hard I know teaching some of the kids that sometimes and some of our kids we just have to let them do it the way they want to right even if it takes an hour and a half to do and it should take 10 minutes but we have to let them do it because we have to learn and we got to have patience for them and sometimes we have to learn that we have to ask for help and we also have to accept help which is not easy and then Pastor Rachel's going to talk a little bit more about this whole last and first thing and what all that means for all of us, not just that we put our kids first a lot of the time, because at Emmanuel, we love them a lot. And I'm grateful that all of the big people here uh, love them so much that you all do anything for them, even say yes to be confirmation mentors too when I ask you. So let's pray and thank God for our parents and everybody else who helped us when we just couldn't do anything else and to help us when we meet somebody who may not be able to offer us anything but we know that they are a child of god and we are to help them join me in prayer gracious and loving god thank you so much for all the people who helped us when we had nothing to give back and help us remember that it's not about somebody giving back to us but that the love that we can share that you've shown to us and that we can share to others Please help us every day to show that to everyone, no matter who they are. In your son's name we pray. Thank you, Samantha. Would y'all pray with me? God, as Janae asked, I repeat, add a blessing to these words. Help them speak to us in a way that we can hear. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know the look, right? The head down, eyes peeking up, waiting to receive a lecture, maybe batting eyelashes in hopes that it might reduce the punishment. It's the look of someone who's been caught in the act and knows that there is no way around it. It's a look I've gotten rather familiar with as a parent, often occurs near broken antiques or hidden stashes of candy. And if you were ever a child, you might have given that look yourself. That's the look that the disciples are giving Jesus when they've been caught arguing about who is the greatest and they know better. As my colleague Molly Basquette says, thank God 
for the disciples because Jesus sets the bar so high and the disciples set it so low. It makes us feel like we can actually maybe follow Jesus too. When the disciples don't get it in this case, Jesus pulls in a prop to help them understand. A child who, as Samantha indicated, suddenly appears from nowhere, we're not sure. And much is made in commentaries of how children were viewed very differently at that time. And it's worth repeating in case you don't know that while our current society almost worships children, helicopter parenting, not a thing back then. You had to have enough kids so that enough would survive to work the land and take care of you as you aged. They were to be seen and not heard if they were seen at all. So for Jesus to pull a child onto his lap would not have been seen as the same as a politician kissing babies. It was not a smooth political move. It would have been radical or offensive, maybe even gross. The child was a symbol of the outcast. They added no value to society until they had grown up. Then Jesus goes and says that not only must we welcome the child, but we must accept that child as the Christ, the Messiah, and also the God who sent the Christ. I don't know if you've been around a two-year-old much, but that's kind of a leap. It's part of his attempts to teach about why he will voluntarily die one of the most shameful deaths known to humanity, and yet still be God incarnate. But it's also his attempt to completely blow up any notion that the Christian life will lead to wealth or riches or high status. While accolades may find us, we have zero right as Christians to expect them, much more right to expect the slings and arrows for upsetting the status quo. This is a hard pill to swallow. It's so hard that the disciples who've heard versions of this for a few chapters now still leave the scene scratching their heads. A child, one who contributes nothing to society and uses a bunch of resources. It's so hard that most of us, even your preacher much of the time, try to ignore it. That prayer we said it was written straight from my heart. Sometimes we each do get it right. Much more often, we are seduced by the messages that tell us we deserve this or that, that we have earned our rights or privilege or vacation plan. And those things are important, rights and rest and being loved. I don't think Jesus wants to deny that to any of you. But when you believe that you deserve them more than others, that's where you get into trouble. And it's so easy to do because our whole society is structured around incentivizing the best. Who is the greatest? It sounds like a game a kid might play, right? Who's the fastest runner? Who's the king of the hill? But also, who's got a higher paycheck? Who's got the most square footage? Whose art collection or travel log is the most enviable? Studies have come out recently that Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok are harmful to teenagers' self-esteem because they measure themselves by the number of likes they get and define their worth by them. But it's easy to pick, pick on social media because it's relatively new and it's so quantifiable. But humans have been finding ways to do this for millennia to figure out where they fall in the social order and how others are under them. Just ask the disciples. Most of us in here have some kind of serious privilege, economic, racial, societal. Many also have able-bodiedness as a privilege, although all of us will lose that at some point. Being mainline Protestant, so that is the, the folks from the Reformation on, has also carried with it privilege and power, but that is diminishing quickly 
as more and more deem the church irrelevant. We are losing our place in line, which is kind of what Jesus said would happen. Partly, we have become irrelevant because we have tried to use our privileged power to jockey into a high position. Now, y'all know about jockeys. You know how dependable it is to bet on what position you'll end up in. We might have jockeyed to the front as a denomination, as a ecumenical group of Protestants, but new jockeys are pulling ahead, leaving us in the dust. And in the midst of trying to gain power, as mainline Protestants did for the last 500 years, we sold out a lot of folks, especially the poor, the marginalized, the folks in greatest need of help, the children. And people see that. Many who have left the church aren't coming back because they see the hypocrisy. They see that we listen to a Jesus who says that we must humble ourselves to the point of going to the back of the line, but we have trouble following it. As our confirmands discussed this morning on the question of why should we follow Jesus? One of the reasons you follow someone is that you see what they do and you find it inspiring. But a lot of times what people see when they look at the church universal is that we're busy measuring our congregations by the number of butts in the pews or the size of our budget or the views on YouTube. Now, sometimes we get it right. Sometimes we have three people who say, this is a place where I have felt welcomed. This is a place where I want to make my home and begin my ministry anew in the world. In fact, I think here in this place, we get it right a lot. And it's always helpful to go back and take a look at whether any of our impulses are based in whether we're trying to get ahead in some way. If we step into this church building with any thought in our heads other than who might I help today or who needs to be welcomed? Well, someone might mistake us for one of Jesus's disciples. And of course, that's where the grace is, right? That's where the good news of this passage is right there mixed in with this really difficult call to discipleship. Jesus still loves the disciples, still calls them forward, still teaches, still forms and shapes and transforms them. And even after he's gone, sends the Holy Spirit to keep doing it. What if in addition to using the child as an example of a nobody, Jesus is also using that child to show how he has the same kind of love toward that child as we do with a taught who looks up at us mischievously, knowing they've done wrong. I think it could be both. For a while, my kids were really into reading the, the Mickey Mouse version of the story, The Sorcerer's Apprentice. It was based in a poem by Goethe, which I learned last night. It was also featured in the film Fantasia, which I already knew. In it, Mickey is the apprentice. And while the grand sorcerer is away, Mickey takes his magic hat and casts spells that get him into far more trouble than he could have imagined. The whole place gets flooded and Mickey nearly loses his life and the book of spells. In the midst of the chaos, the sorcerer returns and utters a word that stops the whole thing. Mickey gives him that look. And the sorcerer basically sends him to the back of the line. Mickey is very humbled, slinks away to his servant's quarters. But in the version that we have, and it tracks with Goethe's poem, it ends by saying that if Mickey had looked back, he would have seen a smile on the sorcerer's face. Of course, the parent or teacher or Messiah must be stern in response to help communicate how serious this is to help the child learn. But sometimes a parent is also trying really hard to hide a smile. The first shall be last, 
Those of you who think you're a grown adult and can do what you want, who've earned a good living and are proud of it, perhaps it would do you good to remember that you were once a child and will again be like a child. But also the last shall be first. Those of you who feel that you have no contribution to society because of your sinful or useless nature, or your lack of resources, you who've made so many mistakes, you think you're beyond redemption, what if God is trying really hard not to smile right now as God lets you figure out how to get out of your mess? Because God knows you will learn from it. And God knows that ultimately you are God's beloved and there is nothing that can separate you from that love. Just like everyone else in line, no matter what place they're in. Before all this happened with the child, Jesus had been teaching the son of man is to betrayed, be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. The disciples didn't understand. What they missed in their obsession with status was the truly good news of that teaching. He will die, yes, and it will be shameful, but he will rise again. Resurrection is the hope of the Christian people. We get there by pouring ourselves into service and welcome and letting God take care of the rest. And when we mess up, and we will, we can also trust that we remain the children of God. And though we may face sternness, with the resurrection will also come a smile. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Pastor Rachel. Church, whether in joy or fear, or anxiety or calm, we each have gifts to give. As people of faith, we respond to the gift of life from our creator by sharing our gifts with God's creation. If you'd like to give to support the ministry of this church, please go to our website, emmanuelucc.info, and click donate. Then you can choose a fund. If you prefer, prefer paper, you can also mail in a check. Ushers, would you please come forward? God, in the midst of everything that is happening in our daily lives, in our community, in our world, you are a faithful God. You continue to supply our daily needs. God, we are returning to you a very small portion of the gifts you have given to us. Please bless them and multiply them for the uplifting of your kingdom on earth. Amen. Friends, as we close our service of worship, I invite you to pray with me and those of you online and Zoom. If there are prayer concerns you want to add to the chat, we do that now. Let us pray. Oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside our envy and selfish ambition that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your peace. We ask your special blessing, especially on those in our hearts who need your care, Bill and Gail, Anne, Teresa, Vicki, Emily and Johnny. With the World Council of Churches, we pray for Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, 
and the people of Afghanistan as they face their new future. We are bold to pray for the church, God. We want to do good things. We want to follow you. Where we get distracted, we pray that you will guide us back with love and care, and that you will help us celebrate when we are able to serve, when we are able to welcome. We pray for all in our congregation who are homebound or in nursing and senior facilities, for Jane, Mary Lou, Betty, Doris, and for people throughout the world experiencing flooding, power outages, fires, oppression, and war. We lift to you, God, all those whom the church may not know, but you do. We hold them all in our hearts as we pray, as Jesus taught us, to our maker, our mother, and our father who art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On your way from here, I hope you will go down into the dining room and greet and welcome our new members. If you haven't had a chance to introduce yourself, this is a great time to do it. And friends, go know that nothing you can do can separate you from the love of Jesus the Christ. The disciples are proof in the pudding. Go knowing that every attempt you make to serve and love is found wonderful by the Creator, is redeemed by the Christ, and is sustained by the Spirit. Go in peace and love. Amen. Thank you.